right. We're here with uh, Leona McGuire competing in her fourth KPMG Women's PGA Championship. You come in off a great finish last week, not ultimately the way you want it to finish, but still a good finish. How good do you feel with your game as you head into this season's third major? Yeah, I've been playing nice the last few weeks. I think, uh, obviously, yeah, not the finish I would have liked on Sunday, but if you'd offered me a 65 at the start of the day, I would have gladly taken it. So, uh, yeah, put it really nice on Sunday, had my iron styled in, so more of the same really this week. Bit of a different test, though. Very different test. This is, uh, I'm calling it the, the beautiful beast of a major course. It's big, it's wide out there. It's new from what we saw when Rory won in 2011. Um, what did Congressional look like to you over these first three days of getting to see this course? Yeah, I think it, it is beastie out there. I think there's lots of options with tees, so it'll be interesting to see how course set up differs from day to day. I think depending on where the tees are, depending on where the pin positions, some of the holes are going to play very different. Um, the greens are still relatively soft, so you can attack the pins a little bit more. And But there is a lot of hybrids, a lot of woods into, into holes, so I think you're going to have to take your chances where you get them, and then pars are going to be pretty good on any hole this week. How does the rain that we're getting we had earlier today going to get overnight tonight into tomorrow affect the play? I think it'll make the shots in. The fairways aren't running that fast, so um, it'll, it'll make it a little bit longer, but then it'll also make into the greens that, that bit more receptive. So... Um, on those plateaus, there is a few, quite a few big slopes. So those holes that are maybe sitting up on top of those levels, you can actually stop it on those, which which would be a bit nicer. Gotcha. Uh, you're a proud KPMG ambassador, and we had a, a great moment yesterday, the partnership with KPMG and PJ of America to not just increase the purse, but double it. Absolutely jack the purse. It's gone up 300% since KPMG joined this championship. How much does it say uh, to what, companies are seeing now in the value of partnering with the LPGA, you and your fellow athletes, and to see a number like that in front of you for this week, what does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's incredible. I think I had a sneaky feeling it was going to go up. I had no idea it was going to go up that much. Um, but yeah, I mean, KPMG have sort of been leading the way over the last few years with the, these bigger, better venues, and obviously with the purse and just how well we're treated this week in terms of the courtesy cars, the dining. You see all the all the logistics that goes into this week, so... I mean, they've been a, a big supporter of me since I turned pro in 2018. So very lucky to have them backing me personally, but also the LPJ in general. Um, and then obviously with the, the Women's Leadership Summit going on today, um, they're kind of walking the walk in all aspects, really. Absolutely. If you're on the Zoom and have any questions, please raise your hand or let me know in the chat and I'll call on you. But I'm going to go over here in the room to Steve. Uh, Leona, with the redesign of this golf course, a lot of people are likening it to Inverness, which went through a similar redesign. Uh, you played pretty well there. Uh, are you see, do you see that? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. I guess there's a little bit of elevation change. Um, there is a decent few shots out there where you don't know where the ball has finished until you get up on the green. Um, I wouldn't say it's as severe as a Ross design. There's not as much of the runoffs as um, like an Inverness had or even a pine needles had. So it's a little bit, but it's definitely more penal around the greens. That rough is really thick, chipping around the greens. So there's definitely a premium of being on the greens this week, I would say. And, and earlier when you had your win, uh, you kind of checked that off the list. Um, now we're looking at majors. Um, what do you need to do to now reach the next level and check that off the list? Yeah, I mean, I think just putting myself in contention as much as I can. Um, I mean, the field is pretty much the same as it was last week, apart from Jin Young's here. I mean, there was nine of the top ten players in the world last week, so I know I could do it any week of the year, so it's just a case of taking that into the major. And it is a bit meatier of a golf course this week, so I think it's going to be a tough test for everybody, and I don't think it necessarily benefits the long hitters. I think you have to execute off the tee into the green and and putting, so I think it's going to be the ultimate test this week, which which I quite like. I quite like that you have to sort of think your way around and, and plot your way around. And golf is a game of streaks, and you're obviously on a pretty good one right now. What's your confidence level coming in? Yeah, I mean, last year was a big confidence booster. I think Meyer last year was a turning point for me, and it was nice to go back there with those good memories and, and almost outdo them, I suppose, this year. So, um, yeah, US Open as well, getting my first first top ten in it um, was a big one. So, yeah, more of the, more of the same this week, hopefully. Reminder to anyone on the Zoom, if you have any questions, raise your hand or let me know in the chat. I'm going to go to the Zoom now and start with Jeff Babineau. Jeff, you can unmute your line, please. Hi, Leona. Hi. 
was going to ask you about the shot you hit in that playoff the other day, what you had under that tree, and, and as best shots of the year go, where does that one rank? It would have ranked a little better if I'd hold the putt, but um, it, it was a cut five wood, um, just trying to bend it around that tree. I, um, I mean, I pretty much walked up to it and kind of had the shot in my head that I was going to hit. At no point did I think I was going to chip it out. Um, I felt like I had nothing to lose in the playoff. It was kind of a bonus being in it. So, um, I mean, I quite like hitting my woods. I'm pretty confident with hitting my nine woods and opening them up and, and stuff like that out of the rough. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was, I wouldn't say it's one of the best shots I've hit all year, but it was definitely maybe the timing of it. Um, it's nice to be able to execute those shots when you, when you really need to. I don't know if Christina asked you about this, but wanted to ask you about your reaction yesterday when you got the email about the purse here doubling. Um, what does that do for women's golf? What does that do as a competitor to kind of amp you up for the week? Yeah, I mean, this was one I had already circled on the calendar, but I mean, there's definitely a little bit extra extra incentive this week. And I mean, it's it's unbelievable the support that KPMG have given since since coming on board in 2014 and, and me personally in, in 2018. So, yeah, I mean, I think we're only going to go from strength to strength. And, I mean, the quality of the golf out here right now that that's going to be played this week is is fantastic. And it's it's great to see KPMG sort of supporting that and elevating um, us in terms of both the venues and the purse. And I'll ask you finally, do you have some memories of Rory winning his U.S. Open here? Yeah, I mean, I, w I was watching on TV. I still still remember him. I mean, he had, he kind of blew the field away that week. So I don't I don't know if anybody's going to do that this week. But um, yeah, it'd be nice to be coming down 18 with with a few shot lead like he had. But uh, yeah, I mean, he obviously was on a on a very hot streak at that point. I really the only part of the golf course I remember was was 18. I know it's obviously been redesigned, but uh, yeah, I mean, that was that was a pretty cool week for him. So uh, hopefully, I can do something similar. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. We'll stay on the Zoom and go to Beth Ann Nichols. Beth Ann, you can unmute your line, please. <clears throat> hey, Leona. Hi, Beth Ann. Uh, sorry, I came on this a little bit late, so I might ask something that's already been asked before. But um, my first question is you had a fantastic final round uh, on Sunday, but knowing how competitive you are, I'm just curious how long it took the steam to stop coming out of your ears afterwards, after that miss fight. Like, how did you kind of decompress after that? Yeah, I mean, I we actually ended up making our flight. Our flight was delayed, so we, um, that kind of was, was the only silver lining of it. But yeah, I mean, for me, it was, I, it was a bonus to make the playoff. I did not expect when I, at any point during the day, would I make a playoff. So, um, I felt like I had nothing to lose in the playoff. Yes, I would have would have liked to have uh, obviously won, but at the same time, to keep putting myself in those positions, it's it's pretty pretty good. And yeah, I mean, you have to kind of get over it pretty quickly with a with a major coming up. Is there anything about this golf course that particularly suited your eye the first time you you saw it in person? Uh, I think into the greens, there's going to be a lot of got a, a lot of woods and a lot of hybrids, which is a strength of my game. So um, yeah, I don't mind having a few nine woods into the greens this week. How long have you had a nine wood in your bag? Um, I'm going to say since the British Open in Kings so 2017, maybe, maybe end of 2017. Michelle, we had one there, and um, we saw her hit it, and Dad kind of went, I already have seven wood in the bag. And Dad said, well, if Michelle Wee's hitting that that good, you need to get one too instead of a four iron. So, um, yeah, I've, I think I've had a nine wood pretty shortly after that, that British Open. Is it a favorite club? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Beth Ann. We're going to stay on Zoom and go to Peter Finnan. Pinnan, uh, Peter, excuse me, you can unmute your line, please. Hi, Leona. Hi, Pete. Um, just really checking, like, obviously, what was the difference in your game compared to so from the Meyer to the shop, right? You've obviously worked on a few things. You've gone from a missed cut to really being in contention. You know, what did you work on in between those two events? Not a whole lot. I think the course was in, not to discredit ShopRite, but the greens at ShopRite were not very good. The greens at Meyer were pure. Um, and I, all of my missed cuts this year have been on Poana grass, so it's, it's not something I'm dwelling on too much. I felt like my game was in really good shape at ShopRite. Played actually some really nice golf and just didn't hold any putts. Um, so really, ShopRite, I didn't, didn't really lose any energy on. It was nice actually to have... 
Sunday off and sort of regroup and, and go back to Meyer. And Meyer's obviously somewhere I, I played really well last year, and it suits my eye. And it's it's just a really good quality golf course, and it's everything that goes into that event, the crowd, just the whole energy around that week is is probably one of my favourites. So it's the perfect warm up for this week for you, really, at the Meyer. Yeah, I mean it's it's a nice event. It's it's obviously. It's always a strong field leading up to a major. I like to play the week before the major to, to kind of get ready. And um, it was definitely a, a little bit shorter of a golf course than what we were playing this week. But um, similar grasses, similar weather, all of that. So, yeah, nice tune-up for this week. We've obviously seen the prize fund rise as well this week. It's great for the women's game. But how great it is as well to see big historical venues like Congressional added to the schedule. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Five, six years ago, us playing on courses like this would have been unheard of. We watched them on TV. We didn't actually, they weren't on our on our rota. So, uh, yeah, that's a testament to KPMG and obviously USGA are following suit as as are the RNA. So we're getting to play on these venues that, that the guys the guys play. We grew up watching on TV. So um, it's nice to sort of get a chance to, to our, add our piece into history, I guess, this week. And Dermot's knowledge of the course should come in handy this week. Yeah, I mean, he was obviously here with Shane in, in 2012. Um, it's changed a bit. He's He's been a bit surprised by some of the holes. It was a, He said it was a lot more tree-lined back, back then. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where any little bit of extra knowledge is, is definitely helpful. But I would imagine I'll I'll be hitting quite different clubs than, than the guys were hitting back uh, 10 years ago. All right, thanks, Leona. Best of luck. Thanks, Peter. I'm going to go back to another question from Beth Ann. Beth Ann, you can unmute, please. Yeah, I was just curious if you've played Muirfield before. Not yet. No, not yet. I've heard, heard great things again, another iconic venue. So, I mean, we've been very lucky this year with the, the lineup, and it's it's only going to get bigger and better in these next few years. And how far do you hit that nine wood, my last one, I promise? Um, usually carried about 187, 188. Perfect. Thank you so much. Do we have anything else for Leona? All right, we'll go get cooled off. It's steamy out here. Thanks so much. Good luck this week. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.